Okay, so I've started recording it. So feel free to, you know, put um, ideas or comments in the chat, but also as we open up the conversation more, um, you do have the ability to talk as well. And um, anything else I'm missing? It's, that's pretty straightforward. And this is, of course, so make sure you're in the right session. This is Sam Ago, Birds of a Feather discussion. Sam Ago is the test and quiz module for uh, that comes standard with Sakai. And uh, let me just introduce Joni. Okay, so Joni Miller is the Associate Director of Learning, has worked at Seminole State College for 11 years. She has 17 years experience working in distance learning in higher ed and has supported four learning management systems. Actively involved in the selection process and migration for three separate transitions to new products. Miller earned her master's degree in technical writing from the University of Central Florida and a, grad, and in a graduate certificate in e-learning instructional technology. She is a Quality Matters Certified Trainer and Institutional Representative for the National Quality Matters Program. She also serves as one of the college's Sakai administrators. So um, please join me in welcoming Joni. Hey, everybody. Um, can you guys all hear me? I know Neil and I were talking earlier, so it should be working OK. Um, so a couple of years ago, there was some talk of making some changes to San Miguel. Um it didn't really go anywhere, and um, I know there's been some work for Sakai 10 and the um, settings, and then um, I know Dayton has done some work and kind of did it themselves. So there's kind of two directions, I guess, that things are going. So, <clears throat> okay, um, so I guess, I mean, if you guys just want to talk about how you guys use and quizzes at your school we, and there's not that many of you so um you know if you're using it for teaching online or if you're just using it for quizzes in uh face-to-face -face classes or what because i know everybody has different use cases so do you guys want to take turns i guess we can start with um david because i know <laughs> you've got your mic well, hello, uh, I'm David Barroso from University of Lleida in Spain, and uh, I'm, I work in the IT service as, as a manager of IT projects. Uh, we, we are using Sakai since uh, 10 years ago. We, we were the first university in the world uh, using Sakai in production, and, and we have been using Samigo from probably from two years later than... Uh, and training through production. And now we are trying to evaluate some other solutions or, or try to see if, if Samigo can improve uh, its, its use. Uh, and because uh, we thought that, that uh, it has a lot of problems, uh, especially with uh, when, when there are a large number of users using Samigo. And, and we, we have to, to take this into account and see how we can how we can improve this, uh, this situation. How many users do you guys consider a large number? Is it for like one test or like just across the server that you guys are experiencing issues? Well, we, we are experiencing issues uh, with uh, not a large number of users because uh, probably uh, the, the most large uh, test we have experience it's uh, with about 100 uh, users and that, that would and be 100, 100 users on the same test or or across different tests on the server on, on the same test but okay. not uh, at the same moment okay i know we've we've encountered some issues too as far as performance goes and they've been kind of hard to nail down so um, it's good to hear from other people that there's similar issues because we were kind of wondering if it was just our setup or whatever. Um, we did yeah, notice yeah. some issues. We, we did notice an improvement when we increased the Java heap, heap size. So I don't know if that's something that would help you guys, but that helped us. Yeah, okay. and, and, and another problem that we have is, is that... Uh, we we don't we doesn't have uh, any commercial um, 
partner here uh, to work with the, the with the code base. We we uh, we are uh, making changes to the to the code, and the all the code of Samigo it's it's very it's very difficult to to go into this code. Uh, there is a, a lot of legacy code and and it's difficult. Okay. Um. It looks like Jeremy's got some stuff we put in the comments. So they use it for any online testing needs. So courses and administrative purposes like employee training. Um, so <laughs> he says some issues are retakes of tests and quizzes and allowing individual students extra time or retakes. So I'm guessing that's probably common across the board as far as um, extra time. You guys have any comments related to that? Because we have um, we have students who have disabilities, and we we have to give them usually double time, but sometimes quite a bit of extra time. And then, of course, there's the whole I need some extra days because I was in hospital kind of thing, and then you have to make a whole new test. So, what are you guys' experiences with that? Hello. Anybody else want to talk? Or you guys? Okay. Um, well, as far as the extra time goes, that was one of the discussions that, um, in, I think it was 2011, 2012, the San Miguel Working Group, we had, we had um, kind of gone through and spec'd out a lot of settings. Um, so let me... Let me uh, see if I can share here. Okay. Where did my browser go? Hang on. Okay. Can you guys see this? I think I'm sharing. I haven't used the blue button in a while. Okay, so Sakai 10 the settings had been reorganized. Well, kind of part two of this project had been to um, add some more fields here to where they could allow individually released. Oh, okay. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Let me see, share screen. Oh, Java, Never mind. Okay, so the original thought was, yeah, Java's freaking out. Um, the original thought was to reorganize the settings into less categories than there were. Let me see if I can do this again. Oh, there it is. The browser allow. Okay. Allow. Looks like we lost uh, Joni. She went down the dreaded Java looking uh, dialog path. I guess. For a minute to get back on. I was gonna um, offer that if we wanted to, you know, there's an alternate um, web conferencing tool we can use uh, that might make the sharing easier if Big Blue Button's not working, but. For a second. I see your question, Elena. Um, I, I don't know the answer to that offhand. Oh, Joni's coming back in. It looks like she'll be here in a minute. Hey everyone, sorry about that. That was kind of weird. I tried to share my screen and then everything closed. Um, so what I was saying is that we had worked on some specs, but then nobody picked up the work that was based on that. So 
it's just kind of been designed um, and there's a JIRA about it, but there hadn't really been any work. And so let me see if I can find the screenshot. Yeah, there, there has been like, um, uh, like uh, a couple of the people who were working on Sumico, like Lydia and Karen, uh, my understanding is that at their institution at Stanford, they've been pulled off to work on some other projects, mm -hmm. possibly one that's like a high stakes assessment project that's like a separate outside of Sakai, and maybe that will be something they'll be able to integrate with Sakai in a future day. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly their plan. So, so it, yeah, so but yeah, the, it, yeah, just kind of like was hanging out there. So, um, yeah, let me see if I can find that Jira real quick. I think it's, um, yeah, here it is. Give me the Jira. I could always try and share on my screen. Okay, it's for, it's Sam 1408. M1408, okay. Maybe yeah. Like, and all uh, Does that has a PDF with all the specs? I think. If not, I'll find the other JIRA. Because there were like three related JIRAs. Yeah, this is the original one. Let me see if I can. Say that again, Sam, what? 14. Okay, actually, it's 1752. Is the. Consolidate availability options into one setting section. All right, yes. let me go ahead and share my, my screen. I'm going to make, take myself, make myself the presenter. Share my desktop. Um, Elena, I see your question about the images. Um, to upload the questions with pictures. Um, yeah, we've struggled with that too. Um, essentially, if we if they come from a publisher and there's a whole lot of questions, we usually just delete the ones with the pictures. Um, if the instructor really wants them, then we will go through and manually update those images, those broken images that come through and um, make those work. But that's that's kind of where we are with that. Um, okay, so Neil's brought up the JIRA for the disability testing and, you know, extended time, things like that. Um, I think, okay, let me see. Neil, there's a, a few attachments. Um, I think the one from August the 1st, or August, yeah, August the 1st, is the one that wasn't like all marked up and ugly. <laughs> Should I bring that up? Yeah, go ahead and bring that up. I'm just gonna look real quick at the one that's in Word. Okay, yeah, that's it. So we had um, kind of come up with this. Now Sam Ottenhoff went in and and at least redid the settings screen in Sakai 10 to be in these four different categories. I think they stayed about the same in here. Um, let me see. Okay, not quite. They um, it ended up being about availability and submissions, grading and feedback and layout and appearance. So kind of the same, they just renamed it a little bit. Um, but as you can see, you could um, either have a whole group of students or just one student, and then you could either change the time limit um, or you could change the um, dates that it's available or both. So, and the other idea was is to make this editable in both the working copies and the published copies. That way you could do it after the fact, like if a student missed a due date. So um, what are you guys' feelings about this? I'm trying to find what Dayton did because theirs was pretty cool too. Let me see. I don't think posted any screenshots. So let me see. Yeah, he, he didn't post any screenshots, but this is the general idea. 
was the ability to change those settings. So. Oh, well, that, it seems like some of this work did get in, like you said, just the Kai 10, right? I mean, they have the, uh, it's not organized exactly in this way, but it's. Yeah, that... they, yeah, they changed the, the way that the settings are grouped, but this piece of releasing, um, to just an individual group with different settings or an individual student with different settings, um, hasn't been picked up. And yeah. so. That's kind of the, I called up, I know it's a huge um, problem for our faculty because, you know, they are essentially have to publish all their quizzes at least twice if they have a student who needs double time. Right. So um, it's kind of been a, been something that we've struggled with for the last about five years. <laughs> I think we've been on sick by now. Um, and it's something that we kept hoping would get fixed, but it, it, uh, was kind of too much work for us to pick up on our own, but. Yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting, um, point that you brought up. So first, I guess my first question is, is, the, is those data and have, um, you know, a fix for that? They, they do, and they have it in production. Um, but I think it's a little bit different than what these were spec'd out to be. I don't think it's the same organization. I think they did their own thing. Um, I have the code. I haven't gotten it installed yet on Sakai 10 so that we can see it. So that's something that we're kind of working on. We were hoping to get it over the summer so we could test it this fall and go live in January. But um, things haven't gone quite as expected so that hasn't really uh happened so we're kind of hoping we can get it going before summer term but i know at the conference this was kind of the direction that the CMAGO discussion went was it was a problem for everyone right well one of the things that's happening that i like to mention it's not directly related to CMAGO, but there are these um you know, these projects that are kicking off where people are using a model of, you know, finding a few institutions and in some cases even um, the com high commercial affiliates are participating and, you know, rallying around the pro project, you know, getting mm -hmm. a scope for it, figuring out a rough estimate, and then raising the money, you know, like a Kickstarter yeah. kind of thing. And so that yeah. might be something to think about. Yeah, definitely. And that's kind of what I was hoping would kind of come out of the conference and it just kind of didn't, you know, we were hoping to get the code um, from Dayton, but they um, took a little longer than they thought to finish it up. So it's kind of, we were kind of hoping to go from there, like see what needed to be done to get it ready for production and do some testing. So, um, so that's one of the things that I know um, our faculty have been interested in. Um, Okay, so let's see what other things people say. So Elena has a, um, yeah, so the, the images, the, when the course is copied, the images are tied to the original course. So one of the things, Charles, that we have done because of that issue is we usually encourage faculty to put them in their, um, my workspace, um, in a folder and make that folder public and then just use the images in there because at least then we don't have to worry. <laughs> Neil's on Facebook. Sorry. <laughs> Jeez. Sorry. <laughs> so that's um, <laughs> so um, that's kind of the, the work around that we've come up with because sometimes they work right and sometimes they don't. So yeah, Charles does kind of the same thing. Um, that they kind of come up with something that's not going to change from term to term. So um, let's see. I had a couple other points here. Um, another one of the things in the same Jira, the redesign of the settings, was the ability to change the group that it's released to after the test is public. Um, I know another 
accepting that uh, the exceptions. It's Neil, can you page down in that PDF? Because there's more, more screenshots, lots of screenshots. Pardon, the one, yeah, um, Jeremy wanted to see kind of when, where the exception section shows up. A lot of screenshots here. Do you know if it's towards the middle, towards the end? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Hang on. Oh, here. Yeah, so that's it. Here's the overriding exception. Yes. So once you get, Jeremy, once you get the um, the group or the student, then you have the ability to, to customize the beginning and due date and time limit. So, and even um, set them different for each kind of area. So that was what we were hoping to move towards. So let me see, what were the other kind of talking points I had here? Um, as far as um, question pools go, I know something that our faculty struggle with is they publish a test, realize that one question that they're pulling out of a question pool for a random draw is incorrect, and they want to get that question out before there's, you know, a hundred students, other students who take that test. So, um, since those questions are kind of copied into a new new uh, copy of it that kind of sticks with the published test, they aren't able to. So that bad question kind of stays there and we're in there stuck with it and to, unless they delete that test and republish it. So that's one of the things. Okay, so it looks like people like the disability thing. Um, calculated type, Rob, can you explain? Because we don't really use that here. So I'm not sure what's broken. I don't know if you have a mic or. Uh, yeah, I just. Okay. Um, well, I've been struggling with both numeric and calculated. The numeric type, um, the problem with numeric is that it shows the, there's a text um, explanation that you see there with okay. uh, range and all scientific notation and all that stuff that confuses my users. And yeah. it shows up with every single question. Now, at Longsight, we actually paid to have a fix okay. on the numeric type. So that will be rolled out, I guess, to the larger community in the next release. Was that um, fixed just for the um, instructions kind of area? Yeah, the, that okay. instruction then becomes an option. Um, so it doesn't show it. In its mm -hmm. entirety, there's a, like a little link on, on the actual test itself. Okay. The uh, user can click on the link and then it shows that, but you still can't edit the text. So, you know, none of my students have any idea what scientific notation is. So that just, <laughs> or, or, or for that matter, complex numbers, if you want to get so that students, far. So the students so, that or just the faculty when they're making the questions? Say again? So the students see all of these? Oh yeah, students oh, all that. Oh. oh yeah, they don't they don't see defining answers. What they see is range. They see acceptable characters. They, they see everything. Wow. Um, they see all of that stuff. Yeah. After okay. every single question. So if you've got twenty numeric questions, it shows the same text twenty times, which is crazy. Wow. But again, we fix that at long sight, but it's a local fix. Um, okay. but I think they'll probably roll because we paid to have that code yeah. done, um, for the larger community, but it's still a kind of an annoyance that you yeah. can't edit that text. But yeah. My, but the like other from question. From point of view, you would want to be able to just say, Oh, okay. Well, these are the, this is what I want you to enter in this box. Right. That yeah. should be something that the instructor should, should yeah. put in their instructions. The other, so, so because that was an annoyance, I started using calculated and that doesn't have any instructions, which is good. The problem is the instructions on how to use calculated don't work. Okay. Um, they actually are incorrect. So I found out the hard way or just by trial and error how to actually create a calculated question because it's not what it, it's not by the instructions given. Okay. Um, but then the other problem with calculated is if you go into preview mode, they, the questions don't show up. 
or if you want to try to do a printed test, a calculated question will not show up. It'll it'll have a number assigned to it, but it'll be blank. Okay. That's a that's a to me a major bug in the system, and we've already fi- I think we already filed a bug report on that, but I don't know if anything's being done about it. So okay. essentially, we're kind of I'm kind of stuck with you know I know if you don't use math questions, then it probably doesn't matter, but yeah. A lot of what I do is math questions. Oh, and, yeah. Um, like, I, I'm sure we would be using a whole lot of them as our, our math faculty are using Alex in my lab and, like, all the publisher solutions now. So we haven't really had much experience using these types of questions since we've been on Sakai. Um, but, yeah, I remember they were always kind of an issue with our previous systems, too. There's always just some sort of glitch that, Either they didn't make sense or they didn't quite work right. <laughs> so, so you know, how many Jira uh, for the one that you that that bug that you just mentioned? Any chance? Jim, do you have uh, that Jira that Jira that you filed about the the numeric and the cal- and or the calculated? For Neil? I believe so. Somebody at Longsite filed a bug on that. I believe. Okay. And, and that was my understanding. The, uh, what What's that now? You have, I was going to ask about the instructions. If he, if Jim, if you have the instructions, the updated instructions for the uh, calculated question type. What you found out worked, Jim. If you maybe could send that along to Neil, he can. Yeah, that would be that would be great. Even, even like a screen recording of what you found worked and didn't work. Okay. Since you figured out a way to make it work. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit of trial and error. So, yeah, I can yeah. do a screencast of what I did, I suppose. Okay. Um, but if you go to the bottom of that, it says, um, you know, click on extract variables and formulas. Uh, none of that, none of that works. At least it doesn't on, didn't do on my system, so. Okay. Um, I know something that comes up less than it used to, because most of our faculty are not know the answer to the question, but we, uh, when students have begun a test and it's in progress, because it hasn't been auto-submitted yet, um, I know there's really no way to see what's in progress or who has a test in progress or anything. Um, our faculty kind of, uh, gave up on asking us about it, but every once in a while they need us to push things through. Um, is that something that's unique to our faculty or have you guys, um, run into that as well? I'm not sure I understand the question. Okay. Um, I don't know. On the, on the published copy screen, you can usually see how many tests are in progress if somebody's working on a test. And if the student doesn't submit it, it just kind of stays there until the due date and then it's auto submitted. Okay. So Charles said he had inquiries as well. Um, it's just always been a big annoyance for our faculty because they're never sure kind of if they can make a change to the test because maybe they'll break it if somebody's taken a test or different things. I mean, most of the time it's just somebody that walks away from the computer and it's been a day or two, but um, that's probably one of the more nitpicky ones, but still it's, it's annoying to not be able to see who, who has a test in progress, if nothing else. By the way, I, I did want to mention something that, that's occurring to me, which is um, that the, the, uh, the teaching and learning group um, is, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. The teaching and learning group is starting to um, act as a, as a place to have some of these types of discussions, including okay. about a week ago, just, just as an FYI. So, um, you know, like okay. you could get a certain distance, a certain distance maybe in this uh, discussion here, and then if they're you feel like there could, you know, additional discussion would be useful, that might be a place we could kind of continue. Okay, great. Okay. Um, 
Okay, so Charles, you say about auto subnet failing to save answers resulting in zeros. Um, are you are you um, showing the entire test on one screen or one one question at a time? We actually took away the ability for instructors to do the um, all questions on a page um, because of that issue, and it's not a unique issue. We had with several other learning management systems. So um, some do it better than others, but we found in our case, um, just having them have to go from one question to the next um, took care of that, although it caused some other issues from performance because every time they hit next question, we run into some performance issues where it's really slow to go to the next question sometimes. You can't ever reproduce it, of course, but... Um, that's a workaround that we found for that because we, you know, students would get really upset because they would end up with a zero. <laughs> so we, uh, so we, uh, what was it? We changed that because they're a whole lot less upset if they don't get their last answer submitted than if they get a zero on the entire test. So... Um, does anybody else have, have other things that you guys want to talk about related to Sam ago? Anything you guys have customized at your institutions? Hello. <clears throat> okay, the the feedback options. Um let's see, Neil, do you wanna pull up the feedback options in Sakai Ten? Okay, so yeah, I know that one of the things that we had talked about in those um, improving Samago settings, because um, these are essentially the same settings that we've had all along, they're just kind of in a different area. Um, one of the feedback issues, I think it was at the conference, we had talked about the whole immediate feedback, especially the fact that it's the top option. Um, because we've had faculty choose that and they didn't really know the implication of choosing that option. Um, let me see if I can find the feedback. Yeah, I don't think it's in here, but I think it was at the conference that we talked about this. Um, and I think there was some talk about either different wording for immediate feedback here or or kind of moving it maybe lower on the on the the list here, but I know we've had instructors who choose that not knowing what exactly that means because <laughs> it essentially means immediate feedback essentially means that when they click next question, they get the answer to the first question. And if they could, if they're allowed to go back in the navigation, they could essentially go change their answer. So um, that's definitely one of the things that had come up. Oh, Jeremy says they create a pop-up. That's probably a good idea because that is kind of a weird use case. <clears throat> um, I think we've pretty much talked our faculty out of it, but I'm sure there's a few here or there. Okay, so question level feedback. That would be um, like question number one has has feedback, period. Here's some ex explanation about um, where you can find more information. <coughs> Sorry, where you can find more information about that question or some more information about 
why that question has the answers that it does. Selection level would be more like if you chose A, B, or C, the wrong answer, then um, you could have, if they chose the right answer, here's your feedback. So maybe you put good job. Or if they chose the wrong answer, it would say, oh, hey, we'll see page 63 in your textbook for a more detailed explanation of this. So that's what question level feedback versus selection level feedback is. And then, okay, Jeremy, or Jimmy. Yes, so rename it feedback during assessment would probably be also a decent workaround for that. Um, Chris, no, there is not a way to only let it be displayed once upon submission. That's definitely something that we've we've had faculty ask about. They either want the feedback to be either only viewable once or only viewable during this window or <clears throat> um, not able to print it, things like that. Um, we used to a long, long time ago in WebCT have like some sort of JavaScript or something that we could put in that information for the test and it would prevent printing. But that really hasn't worked in like 10 years. It was kind of a hacker's way to do that. But, um, but yeah, there's not really a way to do that. And I mean, honestly, there's not really a way to keep them from only viewing it once because they could have their phone or their iPad or something and just take pictures of the feedback. So if you show them the feedback, you essentially have to um, assume that they will have access to it forever because that's honestly what happens these days. Um, but I think that would be a good a good idea would be possibly instead of disabling printing, um, just sh allowing them to see it once. But I'm not sure how much work that would take. So, and then, um, Elena, the other feedback thing here is you can also choose to only release the score. So if you send it to the grade book, they'll see the grade immediately. But you can also choose to not show the questions. So if you're worried about test security, if you don't have a large pool of questions, things like that, you can choose to only release the score for the test. And that would possibly prevent them from sharing things with students who are in their next term. Um, we usually do get complaints because they want to be able to see what they got right or wrong at some point. Um, you can also choose, you can do feedback on submission and only show their score, but that's also going to show all the questions. So it'll show all the questions. It'll show what they got on the test, but um, it just wouldn't show them what they got right or wrong. Um, I've learned from a long time of teaching is that I don't, I don't show them the correct response, but I show them most of the other stuff. Um, okay, so students question and part scores, that would show that they got, they got two points on a particular question or one point or zero points, or if it was like a multiple select or matching, it would show how many points they got on that question. So that's, that's pretty much the feedback settings. Um, you know, feedback on questions as far as the question level or selection level of feedback. Um, a lot of people don't use that unless it's either a test that they've made without a ton of questions or it comes from the publisher and sometimes that comes in. So you can choose to show or not show that. But if you have it in there, you probably want to use it, especially if you did it yourself. Um, so anything else you guys have questions about or ideas about changing? We have about 
four minutes left roughly for this session. Did you want to talk, Joni, about next steps, like what you're envisioning? Yeah. To use some of this feedback? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the teaching and learning group, I didn't realize that they were kind of going in the direction of kind of usability, use cases kind of things. So that's really interesting to know about. Um, if you guys are interested in testing any of this um, redesign, um, unfortunately, I don't have screenshots of the stuff from Dayton yet. Um, if you guys, Neil, do we have everyone's email addresses from when they signed in on here? Probably. Um, I would think so. Okay. Uh, I'll need to take a screenshot of who's actually attending. And, okay, cool. Um, and see if I can find that. Oh, there's a lot more people that have been joining. Oh. Wow. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if I'll be able to, to um, I'd like somebody named Chris, I wouldn't be able to necessarily, uh, you know, identify. Yeah. Uh, or Jimmy, right? Just one Chris thing. Chris and Jimmy. Probably need something where you need to send, you need to ask people to sign up for something. Okay. Um, everybody, I'll put my, um, my email address in the chat here. Um, you know, if you guys are interested in either testing some of this stuff or, um, I know there were a few of you guys who, the pop-up that triggers immediate feedback selection, um, and then there's Neil's email too. Um, cause I was kind of hoping to start testing the new test and quizzes thing in the near future. So, you know, if you guys are interested in testing on your own servers or on our servers, we can give you an account. Um, and you want to test with some of your, your use cases. We're happy to have people help out with that. Um, so. Any, anything else you guys want to talk about or anybody super interested in helping test? <laughs> if so, then uh, I guess email. Okay, so Jeremy's interested. Exactly. Are you asking for testing like that? You're going to merge data and changes into a local QA instance and test them out or? Yeah, I, I think I talked to Wilma about uh, they were going to install it on one of Longsite servers so we could see what it looked like and so she could see what it looked like and start to document. So, um, so since it's already in production somewhere at Dayton, then hopefully it's close to being done. And so maybe we can see where that goes and how the voting for uh, features turns out, um, I guess. So, but I think it's going to be mostly testing and hopefully not a ton of work to get it, to get it ready for production. So. I'll just put in a, put in a little, um, uh, plus one on terms of just QA testing in general. Uh, it's a need we have in the community overall. Uh, we've, uh, you know, unfortunately lost a few really good QA testers or institutions, um, you know, shifted away from Sakai. And yeah. we, could, we could definitely use some back full of additional people stepping up. And there's a lot of different levels of QA testing that can be done in the community. And it really helps us to get releases out faster and also helps us to of course, you know, improve the quality, right? Where we're catching the more obvious bugs. And Sakai is yeah. a very big tool, as you all know, and, and uh, testing is, is a really important function. And uh, yeah, the main thing is that it takes your time, right? And uh, mm -hmm. Jimmy, we're running 2.9 still, but we'll be testing on 2.10. All right. No, that was 210 that you saw. Neil is showing. Right. That was 10.2, yeah. 
So, all right. Oh, okay. So now it's now we are doing Sakai 10, Sakai 11. So right now we have Sakai 10 2 is the 10.2 is the latest version of Sakai that's available, and um, we're, we're we're probably we're planning on releasing a Sakai 10.3. Uh, before the end of the year, and then we're also working on the Sakai 11. Okay. What's the cutoff date now for um, new functionality? Is that already passed for Sakai 11? No, Sakai 11, it's still open. If there's new functionality, I think that we're still kind of um, discussing the, the dates for Sakai 11, and uh, okay. we're roughly thinking, I mean, it seems like there's the majority of what I'm hearing is people like to keep on roughly a yearly schedule. So we got Sakai 10 out this year during the summer. I think what I'm hearing is the majority of people seem like they want to get Sakai 11 out by the summer, but then you have to kind of back that up, right? Because Sakai 11 is going to be a pretty big um, release, and so we'll need a lot of QA on it, and it will that'll and um, a lot of, and we'll have iterations of bug fixes. So really, we would need to get. If we're going to get something out in summer, we'll have to get something, I think, done. We'll have to figure out what goes into Sakai 11 and get it done, like, you know, February-ish. Okay. Or March, something like that, right? So then we have some time to test to get it out in the summer. Okay. All right. Well, thanks, everybody, for coming, for participating. Thanks for leading it. If anyone wants to see, you know, more of my Facebook posts, you know, ping me offline. <laughs> Take care. Okay. Bye. The recording now. Bye.